Welcome to Busy Bee Woodworking. Today we're going to show you uh, assembly and build on media console. And right here we're just breaking down our sheet goods to dimensional size. Um, and we're going to try to make all those cuts uh, all at once. That way the fence is set so every piece is cut to the exact dimension. Now that we have all our pieces cut to size and labeled, we can come back now and add our dados and our rabbits for assembly. Now you always use a scrap piece of wood first just to make sure that the depth's set properly and it's going to come together like I want it to. Now also you can see the push block I'm using is not just the simple stick push block, but I actually can use force to kind of hold the piece down because we want that dado depth cut throughout the piece at the same depth. Now I'm going to run all my pieces through here, all at the same time, that way I'm not having to reset the fence and that everything will come into alignment properly. But if you've noticed, the two center pieces get a dado put on each side, where here the two end pieces now only get the dado put on the inside piece. Now one thing that I didn't film was actually cutting the dados into the top. It's the same way. Um, that we used the side pieces set and you can see in the assembly where it was placed. Now before assembling the whole cabinet together what I'm going to do is come back and put these adjustable shelf pegs uh, holes into place. It's much easier I find to do this before the cabinets assembled. Um, if you've forgotten it though you can go ahead and do it after assembly. It's just going to take a little bit more effort to get it in there because of the spacing of the drill and the openings but you can see that I use this jig from Rockler and I've made my own in the past um, unfortunately in a move I couldn't find where I had it so I went ahead and bought this and I will tell you it does make the job very easy it has a very nice centering bit uh, that it makes sure that the pegs go into the proper space every time and you can see I always double check just to make sure the alignment comes out right so I have nice even shelves after assembly. Also before assembly finishing the interior of the cabinet will be a much easier process for you. Now it's time for the assembly of the cabinet. So you want to add glue to all the joints that you made. Make sure that you use a glue brush to make sure that the glue is evenly distributed throughout the joint so you get a good hold. Also, the back of the cabinet is towards the camera so I'm constantly checking the front uh, piece to make sure that those are flush to the top because that is the most important part. That's where the trim work is going to go and that's where if it's a little bit off it's going to show. Now when it comes to inserting these base pieces into the dados, you want to put glue on both the dado joint as well as the edge of the base piece. Now when you slide them in, you're going to get glue squeeze out. And that's fine, that means you have enough glue on the joint. But you're going to want to keep a damp rag around so you can wipe off and clean those off and keep that interior looking nice. Now that all the pieces are glued and put into place, we can start adding clamps to hold and secure it until the glue cures. Now hopefully you were able to clean up most of the glue with that damn rag, but there's going to be some spots of some drips and things like that. So just take your little chisel, clean those off, uh, and take a sanding block and clean it that way. Once we get the edges all cleaned off, we can start adding the edge banding to the base piece. Um, and this is just simply ironed on and then come back with a razor blade to trim it off and make it flush. Be careful though when you're using the razor blade because you don't want to gouge into your ply piece and ruin your overall finish. Now if you'd like more detail on how to edge band, I do have a full video of that and you can find that on my YouTube channel. Now 
Now to dress up our piece, what I decided to do was go with some base molding and then add some quarter round um, to it to give it a little bit better of a look. Um, but here you can see I don't really take measurements, I actually um, transfer them. And I've talked about this in the past, but it gets you the most accurate fit. Um, especially when you're mitering edges like this, it's the easiest uh, process to go through. And then we're simply just going to attach those with some uh, finished nails. Now here you can see me adding that little extra to the base. It's a little round over and this next screenshot you can really see the difference that that makes. Just adding and pairing different pieces like this together can really take your work to the next level and really makes your piece stand out. Now that the base is all trimmed out, we're going to go ahead and flip our piece around and do the same to the top. Now that we've added all our trim and molding to our piece, we can come back with our stain and start the finishing process. Now the cabinet needed two doors on each of the outsides, so I went ahead and I made those up and I'm gluing those down right here. But if you want a little bit more detail in how to make cabinet doors, I have a video dedicated just to that. We're going to come back with our sander and start with a 120 and move to a 220 just to clean it up and make it nice and smooth. And then come back with our trim router and just add a nice decorative edge around the outside of the door. Take note though when you do this to make sure that you route the rails first and then come back and put the edge on the styles. This will help clean up any of the blowout that might have occurred. Now finish your doors just like you did the rest of the console. Now for this particular piece, um, we were matching existing furniture that the client already had. So I went ahead and I glazed the whole uh, cabinet and doors um, to match those existing um, pieces. If you want to know how we, this was done though, um, just go back to our page and click on the cabinet door glazing. But the process is pretty simple, it's just layering stains, kind of clear coats and other stains on top of each other to create this effect. Now comes for putting the hinges on the cabinet doors, and this comes from a very early video of ours. But what I do is I actually make a jig, and I drill all the way through um, both the pilot holes for the screws, as well as the Forstner bit hole for the bit to go through. And what this allows me to do is not only uh, make sure that each door has their hinges in the same place so it looks symmetrical, but also helps me attach that piece to the cabinet. Now usually I would just finish it with the hand drill like that, but I wanted to make sure it was nice and even, so I came back over to my drill press and just continued the drill um, all the way through so it was gonna come out nice and even. And here you can see where making that jig really comes in handy. Um, it allows you just to put the hinges into the jig, lie it down on the cabinet where you want the door to be, and then you can easily just trace out where you need to drill to insert the screws. And once you've completed that, you can actually lay the jig back down uh, and then secure the screws into the hinges and then remove the jig and then you'll have a nice easy way to place your door onto the cabinet and make sure it all comes out the way you want it.
And here you can see how I just place the hinges into the door so it can settle nicely in there. And then I can attach the door easily to the cabinet knowing that each side will be symmetrical and level and just come out the way I want. Now just come back and add the handles of your choosing, and there you have it, a nice media console. Aw oh, man, think the neighbors are watching? Nah, I'm all good. Oh crap, camera's on.